A few months ago, I was talking on a live stream with Niall Fraser, and we are talking about the situation in Scottish schools. There had been yet another video come out of a pupil attacking another pupil, and we are saying, how long is it going to be before someone is killed in a Scottish school with the level of violence and misbehaviour that's taking place? I always come back to the story from Fife, where a teacher was stabbed in the neck with a pencil by a teenage boy. Uh, teachers in Glasgow at one school threatened to go on strike because of the bad behaviour. I mean, it's, it's an epidemic across Scotland. They were debating it in the Parliament the other day. To be honest, I didn't bother watching the debate because they've got nothing to offer. They're really good on the problem. When it comes to solutions, they've just got bureaucratic emptiness to offer. No actual way forward. No, so let's go over to Hoyk High School and have a look what's going on there in the last few years. These first stories are from you know, before the lockdown. Police have been called out to four separate incidents in the space of a week. It comes amid concerns being raised about whether Hoyk High School was safe and secure. Four teenagers have been charged as a result of the latest incidents and reports will go to the children's reporter. Scottish Borders Council insisted that it had generally been a very positive start to the term. Okay. Uh, the disturbances included an assault to, to, on two adults and a pupil in possession of a weapon. Well, I'm glad it's been a very positive start to the term. At a council meeting last week in Hoyk, uh, a councillor asked for reassurances about safety at the school. However, he was rebuked by council leader Shona Haslam for raising the issue. Guess which party Shona Haslam is from? The Conservatives. The Scottish Conservative Party has been running Scottish Borders Council uh, for many years uh, in coalition with independents, but the Scottish Conservatives are basically the leaders in the council. Right. Last year, officers were called out. This is the police now. Last year, officers were called out to patrol the corridors of the school after a surge in antisocial behaviour. All right, let's read a report about that. Police officers have been patrolling the corridors of a school in the Scottish Borders after a surge in antisocial behaviour. One of the councillors said staff of the school faced abuse, but the problems were involved a small minority of youths. We're making rapid progress in eliminating this unacceptable behaviour. There's that word unacceptable. I hate that term because they're talking about behavior that is just wrong, that is outrageous, that is defiant, abusive, and absolutely appalling. But the best thing to come up with is unacceptable. Right, badly behaved pupils, right, th th this is what happened after this. Badly behaved pupils were f um, who forced teachers to call in the cops have been sent back to primary schools for work experience. This is one of the ways they reacted to it. Youngsters involved have been taken out of Hoyk High School and placed in what has been described as alternative education packages. The Community Council's Vice Chairman, Cameron Knox, added, the initiative is not really punishment. So the pupils that were so wild that basically they couldn't handle them in the school. So they sent them to, I don't know, do some sort of jobs at local primary schools, I guess, sort of to keep them out of the way uh, for a little while. But putting these really, I would suggest in some cases, dangerous pupils, in close proximity to the primary school kids. I'm not sure that was a good idea. Now, Cameron Knox here, the community council's vice chairman, says he's not sure that's really a punishment, but uh, Cameron Knox doesn't seem to be up to date with the philosophy of uh, education that dominates in Scotland, because obviously it's not meant to be a punishment. Nothing is meant to be a punishment. There is no such thing as a punishment uh, in Scotland in general. That's the philosophy that they work by. Right, Hoik High head teacher, Vicky Porteous, said it was a way of dealing with those among them who are struggling in mainstream education. So these pupils, maybe this is the ones who assaulted an adult or had a weapon, struggling in mainstream education. Uh, mainstream education. Not that they're badly behaved, not that they're bad characters, not that they need punishing, not that they need sorting out, they need teaching a lesson. They're struggling in mainstream education. They just need a little bit more help because they haven't quite got the skills to be able to cope in mainstream education. That's the sort of talk which completely neutralizes any possible effective discipline system within the school. And the head teacher said, different things work for different young people. Yeah, you've just got to find the right formula and then you'll bring out the best in them. Okay, that might be sort of true in some contexts, but you've got people who are just behaving badly. Sometimes they just need teaching a lesson. They need pulling up short and a short, short shop, shock, learn the lesson and think, wow, that didn't go well, I'm not going to do that again. They say a zero tolerance action plan has already improved behaviour. Now zero tolerance, that sounds quite tough, doesn't it? It's not really. That would mean 
every time you swear at a teacher, we're going to take you aside and have a little chat with you and ask you how, how you think that makes the teacher feel. Okay, Zulo Torrance says, sounds tough, but you, I can guarantee it wouldn't have been in the way it was implemented in this school. Some more reports. The police were called in to remove one of the pupils a couple of weeks ago. Mr. Marshall said there would be an enhanced police presence in the school, both outside and in the corridors, with police officers also engaging with pupils themselves. I mean, what a state we're in, where you need police officers in schools to protect the teachers from the pupils, basically. Inspector Carroll Wood said, to address these issues, officers have been deployed to the school and will engage with staff and pupils on a daily basis to deter offences and assure that any matters which arise are suitably dealt with. Okay, so that's the state. Let's see what happens next. The council's got a solution to it. A new £48 million Hoik High School will not only bolster educational achievement, it will also reduce disruption and bad behaviour, according to town provost Watson McAteer. So the pupils are behaving absolutely appallingly. Solution, spend lots of money on a new building. That'll do the trick. Fantasy world, absolute fantasy world. Right, just a reminder who's running this council. It's the Conservatives. The Conservatives. Now, I'm now going to read a, a quotation from a member of staff at Hoyke High School, who left the school uh, quite recently, who sent this to the Scottish Family Party. The school suffers from a serious behavioural problem, not at all unusual, and leadership within the school are failing to address it appropriately. There is a no-consequences discipline policy, so behavioural mis misdemeanours are not punished. That is a taboo word in modern schools, of course. So, no, no punishments. Whatever, no consequences for bad behaviour. What do they think is going to happen in that situation? View is that poor behaviours are an expression of underlying issues. Poor home life, anxiety, etc. Again, that's standard thinking in Scottish schools. If someone behaves badly, it's not that they're a bad character, it's not that they've made a bad choice, it's not that they chose to do something wrong. It's some unfortunate circumstance that's caused them to do that, so they need sympathy and support. And as I said, instead of punishment, teachers are advised to employ a restorative approach in responding to incidents. Uh, that's what I've spoken about before, just a mini counselling ses session, in other words. The assumption being that when a pupil, you know, thumps a teacher, the real reason they did that is they didn't understand that teachers don't like that. Once they understand that teachers don't like that, then they won't do it again, because they'll realise, uh, you know, how unpleasant it is for the teachers. Um, okay, utopian nonsense. It says authority is essentially broken down in the school and teachers are routinely subject to abuse. Serious disruption and out of control classrooms are the norm and bullies are free to be oppressive to other pupils. So that's the situation. That is the consequence in Hoyk High School of SNP government policy being willingly implemented by the Conservative Council. And let's see how that's worked out. So I'm uh, reading again from news reports. Teacher takes own life days before trial where she was accused of assaulting pupil. Catherine Scowler was found injured in the garden of her home in Hoik. She was taken to the hospital where she died. A 53-year-old teacher is thought to have taken her own life days before she was due to face trial for allegedly assaulting a pupil at the secondary school where she worked. Catherine Scowler had been suspended since October following the alleged incident which is said to have happened while she tried to take a mobile phone off a female pupil. The languages teacher was due to appear at Jedburgh Sheriff Court in the Scottish Borders to face a charge of pulling the girl's hair and striking her to the head with her hand. But during the early hours of Sunday the 4th of February she suffered serious injuries in an incident in the garden of her home. It's believed she was attempting to take her own life. Colleagues at Hoyke High School are said to be angry at the lack of support given to Mrs Scowler by her employers, Scottish Borders Council, during the disciplinary proceedings and believe she had accidentally struck the girl while trying to get the mobile phone. Right, let's try and imagine what happened here. Well, the teacher would have maybe gone to get the phone or asked for the phone, maybe it was partly handed to her, but then the girl must have started snatching it back or resisting in some way. Apparently the girl's hair got tangled up with the phone that the teacher was holding somehow. I mean, what's the worst crime that could have been committed here? Maybe, just possibly, I'm not saying this was the case, maybe it was the case that actually 
the teacher would have been better off giving up rather than struggling for a little bit longer over this phone. But you could imagine how galling it would be to have to do that. Imagine how humiliating. That would be against every instinct in the teacher. Anyone watching that incident, I am sure, would have been appalled at the girl's behaviour, would have thought she needed to be punished, and would probably have every sympathy with the teacher who'd been acting under extreme provocation and facing extreme defiance from a pupil. Now, rather than having that sort of common sense, intuitive, natural view of it, the authorities, the council, the police, etc., their view would tend to be more children are vulnerable, fragile. Children need to be kept safe. Um, you know, so when it comes to pupils who viciously assault other pupils, well, they still have to be treated. You know, they're vulnerable, they're fragile. Their safety is the, the top priority. So basically, when they do things like that, nothing happens. But a teacher... And what amounted to maybe, you know, a clumsy moment at worst? Where does that end? In this case, it would have ended in court. Only sadly, it ended even worse. Again, to quote from uh, the former teacher at Hoikai School, it is an abomination what happened to such a wonderful teacher as Catherine was. The sense of injustice over this situation is keenly felt within the community at Hoik. Catherine's suicide is a stark illustration of the torment that some teachers are facing in the current age and the failures of current education policy. Absolutely quite right. I remember one of the reports back at the time when the police were being called into Hoik High School. They were, uh, they, you know, the new leadership was installed or whatever. They were saying, you know, we need to work on the relationships between the pupils and the teachers. And I thought at the time, I thought, no, no, you've got to exert discipline. You've got to impose discipline on the school. People who do things wrong, you've got to punish them until they learn the lesson and they stop doing things wrong. Kids are no different than adults in that regard. Every society throughout human history has realised that you need to punish children. But Scotland alone thinks it's now seen the light and is experimenting with a method of bringing up children, dealing with children that doesn't involve punishment. And this is how it is working out. Right, will the Scottish government ever learn? Well, no, no, because they're ideologues. No matter what happens, they just think if something's going wrong, that's because our policies haven't been implemented far enough. They haven't been pushed far enough yet. That is the problem. So when I was chatting to Nadia the other month, I said, is someone going to die as a result of the chaos in Scottish schools? Well, I would say, sadly, this is a case where that has happened. Will there be more cases? Sadly, I can only expect that there will be. Pupils will be killed by pupils. You know, teachers will be killed by pupils. And you know, this sort of tragic event will happen as well due to the stresses and conflicts that are generated out of the chaos that is school life in many parts of Scotland. As I say, the Scottish government, they'll look at this and they'll just think, what's the answer? The answer is always more of the same. No matter how bad things get, the answer is always you've got to push further in the progressive direction. And the group think will not challenge that. The group think is generally the schools, the school leaders, the General Teaching Council of Scotland, Education Scotland, the teaching unions, the teacher training colleges, councils, governments, every political party in the Scottish Parliament, including the Conservatives. And so they're just consumed with groups that think they cannot take a step back and say, what we need here is punishments. We need to assert justice. There needs to be authority. There needs to be respect. There needs to be obedience. Okay, punishment, authority, obedience, and they're taboo words in virtually every school in Scotland. Now, when if a pupil's misbehaving, talk it through with them, try and address any underlying issues, absolutely more the better of that, but they're morally responsible. And when pupils misbehave, they need to pay the price. What we need is the situation where when a pupil misbehaves, they come to regret it. Currently in schools, all too often, a pupil misbehaves and someone else comes to regret it. But this is yet another area where Scottish family party policy would literally save lives. <laughs>